I gotta leave the room. I never know what to expect. I don't either. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh. 2020, am I right? Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Best Of. Welcome, everyone, to another episode where we break down what are our best movies of the year. And this year was a weird one because we didn't see a lot of movies that were supposed to come out in 2020. I think we're just going to declare Bad Boys for Life the winner, right? I, I mean, think so. I think that's what, what we all agree on, right? Yeah, Bad Boys Video for done. Life. Nailed yep. it. All right. Well, see y'all. We're at home. But I still saw way less movies than I did last year. All these movies are at the are at, like in the palm of my hand. I'm like, no. Nah. One's on this streaming service, and I get you gotta get the free trial for that one. And then there's like exactly. a movie theater. Zach's making there. up like ten email addresses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You gotta you gotta make up stuff like uh, all for Wonder Woman. Dogboy49 at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> we have each made our own top 10 plus one with the Nedler. If no one knows what that is, it just, we talk about a movie that isn't necessarily top 10. It could be a bad movie. It could be a good movie. It could be a movie you haven't seen yet, but you want to watch and just talk about. For example, I mean, all of us could technically probably put Soul if we haven't watched it yet, but I hear it's a great movie. And in any other year, we would have already seen it and it would probably make our top 10 because it's Pixar. Well, okay, so my... Number one movie of the year is Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. I already did the review on it. It was like last week almost. It's a perfect movie. I've watched it three times now. <laughs> like the performances alone are great, but then like there's just little subtle, like I'm pretty sure Chadwick, uh, Chadwick Boseman is supposed to be the devil. Cause like there's a line that the older guy says that says, oh, you're just the devil. It's like, oh, well, yeah, I'm going straight to hell. Something like that. I'm like, oh, with my second watch, that makes sense. My second favorite movie of the year is a very, very different, very quiet, uh, literally. That was not supposed to be a pun. The Sound of Metal, which was on Amazon Prime. Uh, it's about a metal drummer who loses his uh, sense of hearing and has to cope with being deaf. This is an absolute, like, the performances in this movie will, they're amazing. Uh, has anyone else seen this? Oh, I have. And so, as someone who has ear issues, like, it is my nightmare. Oh, Riz Ahmed is, like, first in line to win the Oscar. And then on top of that, I don't know his name off the top of my head, but the non-actor who yeah. was in charge of the deaf community, he's so fantastic. This is about the deaf community, and the transitions in this movie are just, like, noises. Like, like, we, ju like we just see a train coming by, or you hear birds chirping. It's just really interesting ways to transition to sh the scene on top of the crazy sound like the sound design that they use in this movie yeah. is bizarre it, but like in a good way because we're we hear it from his perspective and then we hear from our perspective I, again i can't remember his name off the top of my head but the the deaf community leader his 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 scene about just like sitting there and contemplating life and just thinking about life it, like he's like it That's gets God positive like yes there it gets positive but there are yeah. times i was like I mean, they straight up like compare addiction. It's like your normal life and your addiction to normal life, and it is like there. It is a. It was a tough watch, at least for me. I was it is. Like, it is. It is hard to watch, so but it's it worth gets it. positive. Yes, it gets positive, but the journey there, who, it's, it's very sad. It's I just don't want everyone to sit down with their kids and be like, "All right, let's watch this." <laughs> don't watch this with your kids. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> this up third, movie. Movie. third movie is Charlie Kaufman's. I'm thinking of ending things which is absolutely the weirdest movie that I've ever loved. Like, th the movie makes no sense, but it also makes sense the more you think about it. I also watched this three times, trying to get, trying to piece together what is going on. Like, it's weird. I haven't seen a lot of movies, but the ones that I've loved, I've watched multiple times because they're already on Netflix. Charlie Kaufman at his most Charlie Kaufmanist, and just like all of his other movies, the more you think about it, the more things you get out of it. The performances are bizarre. The writing is occasionally great. Occasionally, I, I want to skip the scene. But this is a movie you got to see. 
like if you love movies, you got to see it. If you hate movies, why are you watching this video? The YouTube algorithm has sent you here from watching James Corden clips, and we don't know why. My Netler is every other movie that came out, because I, I haven't seen a lot of movies, and that makes me really upset. But one specific one is Nomadland, because everyone keeps talking about how great it is. And anything that Frances McDormand is in, I, I, it's going to be great no matter what. She's like, I, her and Meryl Streep. Like, regardless of what trash they're in, it's going to be great because of them. Everyone's talking about it. I want to see it. And it's not in Arkansas yet. For, like, it's not on streaming. It's just, it's just kind of there. And speaking of Arkansas, another movie none of us have seen because it's not out yet for us is Minari, which yep. is, like, everyone's talking about it. It's on everybody's list. But we can't watch it because we're not actual critics. We're just dudes talking on the Internet. All right, Zach, thanks for your list. Now we're gonna pitch to Hannah, who you guys have seen in a few of our reviews, uh, and she's uh, not gonna talk about a movie per se, but some would argue that it is a movie in a way because Zach put it on his list. And of course, I'm talking about The Last Dance. So Hannah, take it away. What's up, my getting real people? Uh, Michael came to me and asked if I could go back and figure out what my favorite movie, TV show, documentary of 2020 was. I've seen a lot of good movies. And so my next step was, okay, what's the best documentary I've seen? And I'm sure if you can't tell by my jackets, we're just gonna show you here. Scotty Pippen, The Last Dance was probably the best documentary of 2020, if not my favorite documentary of all time. So I am a huge basketball fan. I've been a basketball fan for as long as I can remember. I love the sport. I love the NBA. I'm a big Kobe Bryant fan. Always have been. Uh, my Instagram handle is Kobe over LeBron one. So give me a follow. You know, the question has always been, who's better? Who's the greatest basketball player of all time? And obviously, like I said, I'm a Kobe Bryant fan. So I've always stood behind Kobe since day one. That has been my man. That's been the best basketball player that I've ever seen obviously LeBron James is a great basketball player obviously right now he's the greatest basketball player um but the conversation always came up who's who's the goat who is the greatest of all time and that conversation has always been between LeBron James as of now Kobe Bryant and of course the great Michael Jordan it interviews Michael Jordan it interviews Scottie Pippen it interviews I mean, they even interviewed the late, great Kobe Bryant. He was only there for about five seconds of the whole documentary, but I enjoyed every minute of it, um, every second of it. I just thought that I knew the story of Michael Jordan, but I did not know the story of Michael Jordan. There is no basketball that has ever been played like that man has played, played basketball. Yes, it was all about Michael Jordan, but... It also shows the side of Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman. And, you know, without them, Michael Jordan couldn't have been as great as he was. Um, I mean, he, he could have been great on his own. But these men also contributed a lot that of, and I didn't know that part of the story. And so this documentary really shows you just the details and the commitment and the talent that these men had. If you have not seen it, go check it out because if you are a basketball fan, like I'm a basketball fan and you have ever been on the fence about who the greatest basketball player of all time is, you watch this documentary and I promise you, Michael Jordan will be the answer for the rest of your life. All right, the first movie I wanna talk about is First Cal. I put a number four on my list. And if you haven't seen it and you need a quick description, it's just two bros stealing milk and making sweets. And on the surface, that sounds like a, a, like a perfect comedy, but this is played straight. Yeah. And it's in like the it's early like, 19th century. Yeah, it's like frontier men and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I don't even remember when it took place, but it's like, you know, it's like back when they were looking for gold and stuff like that. <laughs> Prospecting days. <laughs> Oregon Trail days. Yeah. yeah. Milk and cow and so, days. Yeah, milk and cow days. I mean, you still milk cow. You still milk cows. <laughs> At first, I was like, wait, how's this movie going to grip me? And then the first scene where they st first steal the cow milk, you're like, oh, I'm in. I'm in. They got me. And it's just a joy to watch. Switching gears entirely, 
I'm actually, I actually put a documentary at number two, and that's Time, which is on Amazon Prime. What an amazing, like, stylistic documentary this is. It's shot in black and white, and it's about this woman waiting for her husband to come out of jail and trying over 20 years to get him out on probation or on anything. And she's raised her, her like, three or four or five boys without him for those 20 years. And it's just, like, they've all grown into these, like, beautiful human beings who are all doing different things that are going to help change the world. And you just see how great, great of a mother is, but how heartbreaking it is to grow up without a father. It's not a documentary more as it's a film. It's like art first and it's telling a story and it's eloquent and beautiful. And I, I can't recommend it enough. And yeah, it's one of the best documentaries I've seen in a couple of years. My number one is Black Bear, the Aubrey Plaza movie just knocked me for a loop. I thought for the longest time, I thought She Dies Tomorrow is gonna to be my number one, but Black Bear said, hey, you know what? I can tell weird stories better than that movie. And it did. <laughs> and Aubrey Plaza is just amazing in this movie. She starts off as your, as you know, normal Aubrey Plaza, and then she just starts acting. And it's like one of those things where you're like, people have been typecasted for so long that you forget they can act. Like Will Smith has been typecasted for so long that when you see him act, like even in Gemini Man, which is not a good movie, he acts and you're like, damn, dude can do it still. And that's what Aubrey Plaza is like. I've seen her be Aubrey Plaza for so long that when she shows up as an actress, like in Legion or in Black Bear, you're like, it knocks you out of your seat. Damn. And so that's why it's got to be my number one. And then my Nettler going for Pixar that isn't Soul. I want to talk about Onward, wow. which, oh. you know, yeah, I know. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason I want to talk about it is because that's when the pandemic hit and not a lot of people got to watch it. And yeah. I know it's on Disney Plus now, but it's one of those, it's like, it's like the forgotten Pixar movie, it feels like. It's got a great message. It's got a great story. It's action, which is like not very much what Pixar does. I mean, yeah. Pixar has action, but this is like straight up action. It's what Bright should have been. And if you love, if you're like a big like Dungeons and Dragons or fantasy person, like it's like a, it's weird seeing it like a kid's movie. You're like, it's perfect. Great list, Michael. And now we have to pitch to our, our other co-host slash guest slash whatever we call ourselves, uh, Lauren, who is going to talk about a movie she thinks is her best. So I was thinking of what my favorite movies of 2020 were, and they turned out to all be documentaries. We're learning things in 2020, guys. So some of my favorites were Disclosure on Netflix. Uh, it is about the transgender community um, and how they have been represented in media and movies and for decades, for longer than you probably think, um, but how that representation has colored a, how everyone perceives transgender people. Great stories and personal anecdotes from transgender people um, who I'd never heard of before and I'm so glad that I know about them now. Um, and in that same vein, another one I loved, um, also on Netflix, is Mucho Mucho Amor, which is a documentary about Walter Mercado, he was a Puerto Rican astrologer, or astronomer, astronomer, and was like a big heckin' deal uh, in Puerto Rico and in Latin American communities. But I had never heard of him because I'm not in that community and I'm so glad I know about him now. He had a show on TV where he would do your horoscopes and people just loved him, loved him, loved him, loved him. I also loved Crip Camp on Netflix, all on Netflix, I guess. But it's about a summer camp for kids in the 1970s, uh, kids with disabilities and how that was just like a safe haven for them and was just a wonderful place for them to grow up and learn about each other and themselves. And then how some of those kids grew up to be adults who then fought for disability rights in America and were some of the people behind the American Disabilities Act, the ADA, becoming a reality. Those are some of my favorite movies of 2020. We gotta talk about host number six on my list. It is the one that was made during the pandemic safely, not the Michael Bay one, the horror film that takes place totally over Zoom. I watched it at like 8 a.m. and it like affected me. It's, it's 
oh, it's so good. It's, I mean, this isn't an Oscar winning film, of course, but it's like, it's creative, it's interesting, it's creepy. I just, and it's one that like just sticks with you. I've been thinking about it like, well, of course, because we were always on Zoom. So of course I'm gonna think about the movie that takes place entirely on Zoom. It's just well done. I know a lot of people say there's movies that do this, but it's the best one I've seen. Perfect. Then we got to talk about One Night in Miami. I think, I'm sure I'm the only one with this on my list. I was able yeah. to catch it at uh, the at Filmland from Arkansas Cinema Society. It is the Regina King directed movie. Kent Powers, uh, who just wrote, wrote Soul too, he wrote the movie. It's based on a play that he wrote. And it's basically this one night where uh, Malcolm X, uh, Sam Cooke, Muhammad Ali, before he's Muhammad Ali, he was, it was like right before he uh, converted and then Jim Brown. They're all in this hotel and they are talking about their influence on the world and uh, you know the civil rights movement and their place in it and not just their place in that but kind of how they're going to leave their legacy and it is just so good. It's just like so many great performances. Everyone's going to be talking about this movie in like a month, I guarantee you. So for number one, I picked uh, The Vast of Night. And this, I don't know why I kept coming back to this movie, but this it, this is like my favorite type of movie. It's the one about it's like takes place in the in the fifties in uh, like Arizona, New Mexico area, and it's these two kids who kind of stumble across this alien not invasion, but just aliens are kind of showing up in their small town, and it relies a lot on sound, and uh, it's low budget but it doesn't feel that way. And like the acting, the, the editing, just the storytelling devices it use. Oh, it's like, it's so good. I mean, it's the only, it's like one, a movie that I don't even know why I was getting chills, but I was getting chills during a moment. And I was like, Ooh, it's, it's not even, it's like kind of creepy at times, but you're just, you're locked in and it's so good. And uh, I just, everyone needs to see it. So there you go. I want to like send copies to everyone. Like <laughs> you watch this over, not friends anymore. Oh, okay. I mean, please. <laughs> so my Nedler, you know, con- let's let's just continue the controversy. So my Nedler is it's going to be kind of soon, but I'm going to go with Wonder Woman '84. I saw this literally the night before we shot this. I watched it less than 24 hours ago, but it's just so I don't really get the hate too much for it. I, there, it's not a great. It's not like a perfect movie. It's not the best superhero movie but it's inspiring, it's fun. It reminds me of like Richard Donner's Superman and just like early superhero movies that weren't like Marvel dominated. And it is, and I've seen people talk about it being the worst DC film. That's not, no. No! So we, live, <laughs> we live in a world of Suicide Squad. Chris Pine's fantastic, Gal Gadot's fantastic. Like uh, Pedro Pascal just like taking over the world and I loved it. <laughs> I, I have slept on The Five Bloods, and I keep telling myself, you got to watch it, dude. You I have also it. not seen The Five it's, Bloods, and I'm it's really upset. Straight, it's, a, it's like two clicks away. Just watch yep. it. You know, just... Chadwick Boseman kills. You know, like, come on. Oh, yeah. That's, let's talk about, we got to have we gotta have a special segment for Chadwick Boseman. Because yeah. I put The Five Bloods on my list. You guys put Ma Rainey's Black Bottom on your list. He left us with two of his greatest performances ever. Which is saying a lot, because he's been in a ridiculous amount of good movies where he had great performances, and now it's like he was showing off on his last two. Like in Defy Bloods, Delroy Lindo and Chadwick Boseman put on so great, so good performances that if they don't get nominated for Oscars, I'm going to take an Oscar, steal one, and I'm going to melt it. Uh, A legend lost too soon. And, oh, man, I wish there was, like, more stuff that he had made before he passed away but unfortunately i mean we have the what if uh disney series coming out so we'll at least hear his voice but man just these two performances just he's got to win the oscar you know what give him best actor and best supporting supporting. actor i was about to say is it gonna get double nominated i feel like it could have i feel like it's gonna get he's gonna get nominated like that yeah if you guys once you guys watch the five bloods you'll be like oh yeah definitely if you haven't watched any of these movies on our list please go ahead start watching them most of them are on streaming so it's like yeah. you have no excuse if you're staying at home if you're working from home you can find time to watch these movies if you're not working from home you're still an essential worker 
uh, we thank you. Thank you. Yes. It's like you guys are doing the work and we're just some idiots here at home <laughs> reviewing movies. Anyway, I'm thinking, I'm thinking uh, of ending things. Hey. Got it. Nailed it. Sometimes we just have to Bill and Ted face the music. That's true. <laughs> Un esercito di prova